and welcome back. I'm Mabel Zhang. This is WHCC TV, and we're going to continue ex exploring the business of medical tourism. Uh, we have in the studio right now Peter Harberlock of Slovakia. Yeah. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. And also Alonzo Gil Casares exactly. of uh, the Clinical Universidad de Navarra. Exactly so. In Spain. Well done. Nice well, to nice see to you. Nice to meet you. Yes. So can you tell me, Alonzo, the picture of medical tourism in your country? Have yes. you seen an increasing number of companies exploring this? Well, yes, certainly. We have actually a fair every year in Madrid for medical tourism, actually for tourism overall. And in the last five years, we have a specific section for medical tourism. Many hospitals appear, uh, pharmaceutical companies, you know, and uh, spas and centers that provide this kind of services. And certainly we are attracting a lot of foreigners, previously just because of the sun, and, uh, but now also for providing medical services. Okay, and when did you notice that there were an increasing number of Americans who were interested in, in this? Well, we actually have seen a growing number of Americans coming. Last year we had in our hospital 50 U.S. citizens coming to uh, our hospital, basically for minor diseases. I mean, we, uh, we, we are more and more trying to attract uh, patients for you know, oncology processes and uh, complex uh, uh, procedures. But so far, you know, probably Americans are used to the you know, US health, and they are scared of going abroad and sometimes. And uh, when they come to a hospital, you know, they, they are surprised because you are comparable you know, quality and technology that they can find here in the US. OK. And Peter, you also noticed that in Slovakia, a vastly different destination from Spain. But you are also offering the same kinds of services in your country? Yeah, we are, we are living in Europe, and in the European communities, uh, the healthcare is quite similar. They, they exist some slight differences, but the, the rules, they are quite common. And we have a huge experience to meet each other in the European conferences, and uh, when we are both the part of the uh, European Union, we can share our experience, and uh, it's true that we have, uh, we, I'm working in the infertility treatment in this field, it's very, uh, very visited also by, by clients from abroad, from from the US or from Asia or from a, from a different country because it's something what people just can have this treatment abroad of different reason. First reason is probably that it's more affordable. Second reason is that they can they want to keep the privacy and, and they don't want to have this treatment in, in their surrounding. And and the first time they want to visit with Europe and this treatment could be Com combination of visiting Europe, spending the time in Europe, and having the treatment during this time when they are there. What treatments um, do you specialize in? I am specialized in IVF treatments. Mm -hmm. It means the, the, it's, uh, it's infertility, and uh, uh, this treatment is uh, mostly mostly what is used mostly from the abroad is donation program of of embryos of all side. It means that that. Uh, this field is more and more increasing in whole Europe, but the classic treatment of IVF too, because of the, of the affordability of the prices, whatever you mentioned. Okay. Do you also have IVF um, not treatments? Not in our hospital. And, and not in your hospital. In but our hospital. let's go to the treatments that you do specialize in, yes. and can you give me a cost comparison? Sure. For example, you know, just uh, give a quite common and unfortunately increasing uh, pathology, which is, you know, the uh, leukemia. Well, for bone marrow transplantation, uh, the price in our hospital would be 130,000 euros. That's roughly $150,000. In the U.S., that price would probably be between 450 and 500,000 dollars. So it's it's less expensive. Why is it less expensive? Well, in our hospital, uh, all the doctors belong to the hospital itself. They don't ask for additional fees, you know. Uh, on top of that, you know, we are in a country which is extremely competitive in terms of prices because the social security offers very competitive services in terms of quality at zero prices. And so, you know, private hospitals need to work on the extra mile, provide better service than social security, but at good and affordable prices. Okay, that's very, very interesting. And 
also, Peter, just to go back to the IVF um, that you brought, the procedures that you brought up, do you also have a cost comparison there? Uh, definitely, we can compare it. It depends on different treatment in infertility, but it moved in Europe from 2,000 euro to 5,000 oh, really? euro, what is much less than, than in the US or, or normally. Okay. Should there be any sort of follow-up concerns? I mean, leukemia treatment, uh, very far away from home, from your support system. Should people be aware of that? That is a very good question. You know, we actually have many, many patients coming from Latin America. And what we have been noticing is that some of them, when they return, they go to their hematologist, and the hematologist follows different procedures and what we have applied. So we need, we need to go there or try to familiarize with the doctors. Actually, they are not our patients. They are the local country patients. So we should give them back, but with the you know, right directions, because we have been having the patients six months with us, and we know exactly what he needs. So that's more and more our doctors, actually, you know, last month they went to Ecuador to visit the different oncology centers and the hematologists to try and discuss what were the complex things that you sh should be addressed. Oh, that's so that at the end of the day, you know, the patient recovers his full, his full capabilities. So you're saying that your doctors from Spain yes. will travel to the patient's country? In, I mean, in, in specific instances, like this one in Ecuador, where we have many patients and we actually have a specific agreement with the government, yes, we actually do that. Do you, now, Peter, that's, is that a service that you also offer in uh, Slovakia, where yeah. your, oh, sorry, oh, where no, your no. doctors would travel to the patient's home uh, country? I think that is opposite way in infertility. Mm -hmm. It's not only the doctor, but we have the very good coordination and we have a very good team of coordinators because it's necessary to coordinate all this treatment and traveling with the, with the patient from, from abroad. And then it's well prepared, all this organization from, from coming to, to the country, visiting the country, uh, having the treatment, cooperate with the, with the, the, with the doctors in the, in the, in the country from, from the patient uh, are. It means that we can, we can just well organize in whole, in whole team and having this hospitality, what is very important for, for, for patients who came from abroad, to having all these services, what they ask for. Okay. All right. Peter Harvelot of Slovakia, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Too. And also Alonso Gil Casares from Spain. Uh, thank you for, so much for your time. Thank you. Right. My pleasure. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Stay tuned to WHCC-TV. We have much more to come.